Father, we thank you for this morning. Take all the glory in the name of Jesus. Thank you for today's Sunday. We give you praise. Thank you for all you have done for us during the week that come by. We are grateful. Thank you for all our children, our wives, our husbands, our co-workers, our, you know, the blessing of the Lord that is upon all of us. We give you praise. As we go into your word this morning, let our heaven be open. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. Amen. Let me quickly appreciate all our brethren, all our viewers all over the world. The report we are getting is that the word is getting to them. And you know, the Bible says the entrance of your word gives light and it gives understanding to the simple. He sent his word and his word healed them and delivered them from all the afflictions. So, and faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So people, as you hear it and know your faith is growing, even this period when everything is upside down globally, it is the faith in the word of God that will keep you going. And I believe very strongly, as we hear the word again today, the same faith that is planted in you will keep you going in the name of Jesus. Today we are looking at what I titled, The Absolute Power of God's Promise. The Absolute Power of God's Promise. Our text will be taken from Deuteronomy chapter 15. I'll read quickly verses 1 to 6. And the, at the end of every seven years, thou shalt make a release. And this is the manner of the release. Every creditor <coughs> that lended out unto his neighbor shall release it. He shall not exact it of his neighbor or of his brother because it is called the lost release. Look at verse 3. Of a foreigner, <coughs> excuse me, thou mayest exact it again, but that which is thine <coughs> with thy, bro with thy, bro thy brother Thy hand shall release, save when there shall be no poor among you. For the Lord shall greatly bless thee, and the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, for an inheritance to possess it. Look at verse 5. Only if thou carefully hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all this commandment, which I command thee this day. Verse 6. For the Lord thy God blessed thee as he promised. So everything that happened to them is accord, according to his promise. For the Lord thy God blessed thee as he promised. As he promised thee. And thou shalt lend unto many nations. And thou shalt not borrow. Thou shalt reign over many nations but they shall not reign over thee. Now, look at that. Look at that. that, that that's a great promise. So I'm, I'm saying the promise of God is the reason for everything he does for us. He said, the God, the Lord thy God has blessed thee. You are, so, you are blessed that you begin to lend to nations and you're not born. You begin to rule over them and they not rule over you. Now, if you look at Deuteronomy chapter 19, we're still talking on the absolute power of God's promise. Deuteronomy chapter 19. I, I, I quickly read verse 8. Thank you, Jesus. Chapter 19, verse 8. And if the Lord thy God enlarge thy coast, as he has sworn unto thy fathers, and give thee all the land which he promised to give unto thy fathers. Now look at that. All the promise is everything he does is based on his promise. For the promises of the Lord are yea and amen. So Israel, as an example, everything God promised them, he brought it to pass. He promised to enlighten their coast. He promised to increase them. He promised to multiply them. He promised to be with them. He promised to feed them. Everything he promised came to pass one after. In fact, the Bible says there was none of his promise that he didn't fulfill. Everything he said, it brought it was brought to pass in first king chapter 5 verse number 12 the book of first king chapter 5 verse number 12 and the lord gave solomon wisdom look at that as he promised him and there was peace 
between Hiram and Solomon, and they two made a league together. God gave him promise, I mean, I mean wisdom, rather, as he promised. That means everything was based on the promise of God. Now look at me here. The more the promises you know, the more you enjoy the faithfulness of God, because you can't enjoy what you don't know. If he has not, if he has said it, it's going to fulfill it. Now, in, in, in the book of uh, 1 King chapter 8, the same first king, look at verse number um, 20 and 24. 1 King chapter 8, 20 and 24. And the Lord had performed his word that he spake, and I am risen up in the room of, my, of David, my father, and sit on the throne of Israel at the Lord promise. And I built a house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. Now look at the next verse, verse 24. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 24. Everything was according to the promise. Who has kept with thy servant, David my father, that we thou promise him, thou spake also with thy mouth, and hast fulfilled it. With thy hand, as it is this day, you promise with your mouth, and you fulfill with your hands. Hallelujah. So, the life of Solomon wa <clears throat> was an example of a promise kept. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just like we have it for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The life of Solomon was like, God said to David, Don't, you can't be me how to go, you have shared too much, you are a man of war, all the days of your life. Now, but I'll give you a son that will be a child of peace. That child is going to live in peace, is going to be me, be me in house. And that's what I'm mean exactly. So everything God promised David concerning Solomon came to pass. Hallelujah. And I, prom I, I pray for you today. Every promise you have seen, even the one you have not seen, that God has made will come to pass in your life. Jeremiah 33 verse 14. Every of God's promises that he has made will surely come to pass. 33 verse 14. Thank you. Behold, the days come, says the Lord, that I will perform that good thing which I have promised unto the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. I like that. The day has come in your life <laughs> that God will perform that good thing which he has promised to the house of David, to your own house, to your own generation. Hallelujah. I believe this scripture so much that I even mark it in my Bible. He said, the days are come, says the Lord, that I will perform that good thing, which I have promised unto the house of Israel. You cannot use it, the house of something grace. You can use it and put your own name there. And to the house of Judah, that every promise that God has made concerning your house will surely come to pass. Romans chapter 4, from verse 20, I like that. Romans chapter 4, verse 20. For the promises of God are yea and amen. Hallelujah. Abraham staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Look at me here. There's a difference between promising and able to fulfill promise. <laughs> A lot we promise when it comes to time to time to fulfill it, they back out. But in the case of God to Abraham, everything that God promised him came to pass. And the Bible says in, in verse 20, he started Abraham because he knew that God himself does not fail in his promise. <clears throat> Look at verse 22. And therefore it was counted to him for righteousness because he believed God for whatever God says he would do. Now look at the next verse, verse 23. And it was written, uh, now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also, who to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. So Abraham believed God. He staggered not at the promise of God to unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, because he was fully persuaded Whatever, whatever God has promised, he has the ability to fulfill. So the other time, a lot of people in our world here, they behave like politicians. Eh? 
they will promise heaven and earth. But when it's time to fulfill, they back out. Now, God does not back out from his word. Romans chapter 9, verse 9. Whatever he says, he has the ability to bring it to pass. Romans 9, 9. For this is the word of promise. At this time will I come. And Sarah shall have a son. And it came to pass. Go to Genesis 22. You see from verse uh, 21, from verse 1, it came to pass. Everything God promised. Abraham at the age of 100, Sarah at the age of 90, God promised them a son. It came to pass. And for you, every promise of God for you shall surely come to pass. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. We need to know it. We need to believe it. We need to stand by it. Chapter 9, chapter 1, verse 10. Who delivered us from such a great... Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. Okay. Who delivered us from so great a debt? And God delivered us in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. And so, every promise. The promise to deliver you, he will. Promise to bless you, he will. Promise to save you, he will. Promise to help you, he will. Promise to provide for you, he will. Once it is written, it is written. Whatever he has said is what exactly that he will do. Now, in Isaiah chapter 54, that's why my, my favorite scriptures, Isaiah 54 from verse 10, Isaiah chapter 54 from verse number 10, I read it over and over. Of course, from, from verse 10, for the mountain shall depart, and the hills be removed. But my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, says the Lord that hath mercy on thee. Mountain will depart. He will repair my kindness. Shall not depart from thee. Now, if you go to verse number 14, hallelujah. For, let's start from verse 13. And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. And righteousness shall thou be established, thou shalt be far from oppression. And from terror for it shall not come nigh thee. Look at verse 15. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee will fall for your sake. That's a promise to hold on to. Behold, I have created the spirit that bloody coal in the fire, and I have bring, that bring forth and Israel for his work, and I have created the waster to destroy, but no weapon formed against thee shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. Look at it. This is the heritage of servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. I love that scripture. The mountain will depart, the heat, but my kindness shall not depart from thee. God's, 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 God's promise or God's promises must come to pass. It must surely come to pass. Every word of God is powerful. Whatever he says, he has the ability to fulfill it. He, he promised the Savior, the Savior came. He promised us help, help came. <clears throat> Whatever he has promised you, I believe strongly. As you hold on to it, it will surely come to pass. Isaiah 43 from verse 18, the promise of God will surely come to pass. Whatever he has said, he has the power to bring it to pass. 43, I read from verse 19, from verse 18 rather. Remember you know the former thing, then the consideration of who. Behold, I will do a new thing. That's a promise. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And look at that. Don't remember the former thing. I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Hallelujah. Shall you not know it? I will make a way in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. He said, even said, the beast of the fish shall honor me because I bring water in the desert. I am saying that whatever he has promised, what has he promised here? A new thing. <laughs> Amen. It was not there before. It's going to come. <laughs> Hallelujah. New thing that you have never seen before. Good, good new thing which shall begin to come to pass. Romans chapter 8 from verse 31 to 32. By the grace of God, something new is coming to pass in your life. In the name of Jesus. Romans 8. Look at it from verse 31. Thank you, Jesus. What shall we then say to this thing? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spare not his own son, but if I am up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Look at that three. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemned? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that's true sin. Who is even at the right hand of, of, of God? Who also maketh intercession for us? Your prayer may not be enough, but Jesus is praying for you. Sitting at the right hand of God, making intercession for the saints, according to the will of God. 
He knows the will of God. So that means where your strength stop, his own starts. Hallelujah. <laughs> where your strength stop, where you can't go any further, he will go further. Hallelujah. And I pray for you today, as you rely on his promises, you will not fail again. As we rely on his promises, you will not be down again. Rely on his promises, the devil will never have an upper hand on your life. As we rely on his promises, that which you are trusting God for before the end of this year will surely come to pass in the name of Jesus. Look at it here. God said, I am with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Isaiah 41 from verse 10. He promised to be with you. Isaiah chapter 41. Look at it from verse 10. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea. I will help thee, yea. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Hallelujah. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded, and they shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. I like that. Look at verse 12. Thou shalt seek them and shall not find them. Even them that contended with thee, they that war against thee shall be as nothing, and as a thing of naught. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not. I will help thee. <laughs> Hallelujah. I like that. That's the promise of God. Fear not, I will help thee. That means God is with you. Hebrews chapter 5, chapter 13, verse 5. Hebrews chapter 13, verse number 5. Thank you, Jesus. Because if God be for us, who can be against us? Let, let your conversion be without covetousness and be content with certain as he have. For he has said, I will never leave thee. Forsake thee. That's a promise. I will never leave you. I will never. That means whatever your needs may be, even in this period of pandemic, it will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. That may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what any man can do unto me. So when you trust him according to his promise, his promises are here and amen. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. First Corinthians chapter 10. That's one of my also favorite scripture. Chapter 10, verse 13. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. There has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Who will not, who will not suffer you to be tempted about that you are able? But also with the temptation, also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. No temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Hallelujah. Somebody came here and came to me and stated all that he was. I said, no problem. Open your Bible. <laughs> no temptation taking you, but sword as is common to man. A woman gave back to a set of twins, and then you know, they were premature, they were put in the incubator. One was doing well, the other was not doing well. So she called me and I screamed on her. I said, My friend, you are not, you, 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 did, you didn't create them. God who made them twins, want them to live as twins. Hallelujah. For every good gift and every perfect gift, James 1 17, is from above from the Father of light, with whom there is no very bullet, not a shadow of turning. And then we pray. That was it. By the time I saw the twins again, they are already big boys. Hallelujah. What happened? Every promise of God is yea and amen. You can rely on it, you can depend on it. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 25. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 33. Thank you, Jesus. Verse number 25, his promises are yea and amen. Hallelujah. Thy shoes shall be iron and brass, and as thy days, so shall your strength be. That's a promise. <laughs> as your days are, so shall your strength. Can you believe that promise? Can you hold on to it tight? Don't let it go. 33, verse 25, don't let it go. Hallelujah. As your days are, so shall your strength be. Hallelujah. He said, Thy shoes shall be iron and brass, and as thy days, so shall your strength be. That's the promise of God. I want to hold on to it. Isaiah chapter 46, verses 3 and 4. Isaiah 46, you can hold on to it. You can rely on it. Verses 3 and 4. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He came unto me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, which are born by me from the belly, which are carried. On, I mean, from the womb, look at verse 4. 
and even to your old age, I am he. And even to all years, will I carry you. I have made, I will bear, even I will carry and will deliver you. <laughs> Look at that. I am the one who created you. I the one who put you in your mother's belly. I will carry you, meaning I will help you. Look at verse 5. To whom will you liken me and make me equal and compare me that it may be, that may be like? Hallelujah. Look at that. God said, I am the one who made you and I will surely carry you. Praise God. Now, before we go, look at it. Psalm 91 from verse 10. I like that. Psalm 91 from verse 10. We're looking at the absolute power of God's promises. Hallelujah. The absolute power of God's promises. Whatever he promised, he has the capacity and the ability to bring to pass. Psalm 91 from verse 10. Hallelujah. He said, there shall no evil before thee. I thought you say amen to that. Neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. For he shall give his angel charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Look at verse 13. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and dragon shall thou trample on the feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high. I will honor him. I will set him on high. Because he has known my name, he shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him, and I will show him my salvation. That's the word of the Lord. And I believe it shall be so for you in Jesus' name. He has promised to guide us continually. Psalm 32 verse 8. To guide your way. Wherever you go, the Lord will guide you. Psalm number 32. Thank you, Jesus. He has promised to, verse 8, to guide us continually. 32, verse 8. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go, and I will guide thee with my eyes. I like that. He promised to guide you continually. He promised to be with you and guide your way. Hallelujah. Now, in Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Thank you, Jesus. I alone know the thought that I think towards you, thought of peace and not of evil and to give you an expected end. That's the promise of God. It's taught to us who is not evil, but good, and to give you an expected end. Now, God promised to heal you, the, or to, to heal us, as sure and reliable and dependable. Hallelujah. In Psalm 103, verses 1 to 5, Psalm 103, verses 1 to 5, is promised to heal us. It's sure and reliable. Hallelujah. Is promised to heal us, assure and reliable. Because he knows that once in a while, some little little thing come, may come up here and there. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefit. Who forgiveth all thy iniquity? Who heal all thy diseases? Who redeemed thy life from destruction? Who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies? Who satisfied thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles? Now, so promise to heal us. Is sure in Matthew 8 16 and 17, promise to heal us when there are little, little things here and there. Matthew chapter 8, if you go to verse 16, assure. And when the evil was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirit with his word and healed all that were sick. Amen. Like my free, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses. So promise to heal us at sure, very sure and reliable. God's promise cover every area of your life. Every area of your life, the promise of God covers it. Exodus chapter 14, verse 14. Exodus 14, 14. The promise of God covers every area of human endeavors. Look at it. The Lord shall fight for you. You shall hold your peace. As long as you are here. There may be battles here and there, but the Lord will fight for you. Battle in your home, battle at, at home, battle at work, battle here and there, the Lord will fight for you. That means you don't need to worry yourself about battles of life. Hallelujah. Because the Lord will fight it. A woman coming from the U.S. and explain, here, yeah, this one, this one, I say, no problem. The Lord will fight for you. <laughs> Amen. You will hit the Lord, one fighting. <laughs> Just hold your peace. Amen. And when you allow him to fight for you, he will fight beyond your wildest imagination. Hallelujah. And I believe God this morning, 
as we round up this message, the, the, whatever be the battle of your life, Jehovah God will fight for you. He will fight for you and you will hold your peace. Now, if you go to Psalm 23, hallelujah, verse 4, the book of Psalm 23, verse 4, we're rounding up, I believe stronger, you can rely on it, you can depend on it, you can trust in it. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. He said, thou prepare a table before me. In the presence of my enemy, thou anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I like that. Surely. That's the promise of God. To be with you, to provide for you, to help you, to help your children, to help all that belongs to you. Hallelujah. Nothing to worry about. Psalm 91 verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall do what? Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Say, I will say of the Lord is my refuge. That's the word of the Lord. You can rely on it. You can read it over and over and over and over again. You become part and parcel of you. Psalm 84 verse 11. The book of Psalm 84 verse 11. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I give God the praise. Psalm 84 verse 11. For the Lord God is a son and a shield. Lord, we give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Everything good, the Lord will do it from him. <laughs> Amen. The Lord is the sun and the shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing. Can you think of any good thing? He will not withhold it from you. As long as you desire it and you believe God for it, it's coming to pass. Psalm 85, verse number 11. 85, look at verse number 11. Truth shall spring out of the earth. And righteousness shall look shall look down from heaven. Truth. What where is it coming from? It's going to spring up from the earth. That means you will know the truth. And what happened? The truth will set you free. Hallelujah. The truth of God's promise will set you free. I, I was in Elisha some years back. And one of my pastors came to me and said, Sir, I had a dream concerning you. I said, Yes. He said, I dreamed that you travel. Say, I'm planning to travel. And actually, I was planning to come to Lagos, from Lagos to Abuja. <coughs> From Abuja back to Lagos and back to Elisha. He said, I had a dream that you had an accident. I said, it's not true. <laughs> Man, he was trying to explain. Mm. He said, I saw your wife and she said, mm -mm, that's not true. What you just said now is not true. Because the Bible says, the Lord will keep my going out and my work, and my coming, and he will deliver me from all evil. So he has promised it. So he was trying to explain. He said, mm, don't explain your dream. Well, the word of God supersedes your dream. Now, take note of it today. Your dream may be faulty, but God's word is forever settled. Anything will happen and you have a bad dream. What the boy had was a bad dream. Hmm? <laughs> Maybe they eat on time. Maybe he ate late. <laughs> so I came to Lagos by road, went to Abuja by air, came back to Lagos by air, went back to Elisha by road, and I saw him. I said, I'm back. Hallelujah. What happened? He had a dream too, but the dream was not true. The dream was not the truth. The truth is the word of the Lord. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in, and He will deliver you from all evil. Look at James chapter 5, from verses 14 to 15. I believe strongly this morning that as you are following the word, the life you will live from today will be according to His promise in the name of Jesus. Not according to what is any, among, is any sick among you, let Him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over Him, anoint Him with all the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed sin, shall be forgiven him. Confess for one to another, and pray for one another, and that he may be healed. The factual, vibrant prayer of the righteous man availeth much. That means prayer of faith will save the sick. The Lord will raise him up. Hallelujah. The young lady coming from the U.S. said, sir, he said, I'm healed. He said, pray for me, and I prayed. By the time she went for a test, she couldn't find anything that could have... It, that she was suspecting to be the sickness. Hallelujah. Because Jesus said, the prayer of faith will save the sick. And the Lord will raise him up. Finally, before we go, <clears throat> John chapter 4, 13 to 16. John chapter 4, 13 to 16. Because the promise of God is yea and amen. Chapter 4, from verse 13. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus answered and said unto them, Whosoever drinketh this water, shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in it a well of water sprinkling up unto everlasting life. Everything God gives is everlasting. 
Amen. His promises are everlasting. His blessings are everlasting. And I told some people, I said, God is not the way you think it is. Now he will bless you in the morning, but afternoon he will take it back. He said, because you offended me. <laughs> Amen. That's the only of a man who attended the program. And the pastor announced that he needed uh, a car for their ministry and the rest of them. And one man raised his hand and he donated his car. He went home. And when he got home, I'm sure his wife and his family rose against and said, are you crazy? You gave car to church? So the, 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 the trouble gave too much for the man. He came back to the pastor. I said, I said sorry, I want my car back. <laughs> I even had another one who went and got police. <laughs> they helped me recover my car. I did it by mistake. <laughs> God is not like that. His promises are yea and amen. Whatever he says, is well able to perform. If you say, I will bless you, he has blessed you. And if he blesses you, he won't come back and collect it. No. No. <laughs> he will not do that. I told people, I said, God's not the way to think it. Some of you think that if you make a promise, he make it out of excitement. <laughs> and when the excitement is over, he, he will withdraw his promise. No. He doesn't do that. <clears throat> He's a human being that made promise out of excitement. Somebody said, when you are happy, don't make a promise. <laughs> Because out of excitement, you may say, I will do this, I will do this, I will do that. When the excitement is over, <laughs> I say, hey, I know me to cover me. <laughs> See what I've said. No, God is not like that. Every promise of God, over 3,000 promises in the Bible, from there to Revelation, is not made out of excitement. He made it after, by himself. And he's able to bring it to pass by himself. When the time for it to come to pass, it comes to pass one after the other. Let me say it before we go. You can rely on his promise. You can trust on his promise. You can depend on his promise. You can wait for his promise. For his promises are ye and amen. Is there any promise you have that God made to you that has not come to pass? Wait for it. The Bible even says, though it tarry, wait for it. It will surely come to pass. Ah, the promise is taking 20 years. It doesn't matter. Because a day before the Lord is like a thousand years. A thousand years is like a day. Oh, this promise was made to me when I was five years old and I'm 15 now. Look at me. It's not so. The promise of God will still come to pass in your lifestyle. He said it, it will be bring it to pass. There are so many promises that we write down that God said to us. We write it down. We are, what, we are waiting for the manifestation. We are growing our faith so that it will come to pass. Look at me here. Don't let anything called doubt rob you of the promise of God. You have no reason to doubt it. No reason to that at all. Just believe him. He said, believe the Lord your God and you will be established. Believe his servant or his prophet and you prosper. Believe him, whatever he says, he will come to pass. If he's the one who says so, he will surely come to pass. Before I go, let me share, share this one with you. I was in Malaysia. I wanted to start a business and I you know, was other thing I was doing. And I was coming from that shop one day, 1 p.m. in the afternoon, and the Lord spoke to me. He said, I have said before thee an open door, which no man can shut. I know your strength is small, but I will help you. Pack you from this town and go to Lagos. That's it. He said, I will help you. Do you know that today I live on that promise? He said, I have said before thee an open door, which no man can shut. I know your strength is small, but I will help you. Revelation chapter 3, verse 17. So later I know it was in the Bible. And then it was there, I, it, it, it was handed to me verbatim. But from the mouth of God by himself, and I had it with my hair. <laughs> Amen. Till today, I stand on that promise. He said, I've said before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. I know your strength is small, but I will help you. Now, look at me. You can also rely on whatever he has said. Whatever is happening around you <clears throat> does not change God's promise. His promise will never change. And then let, let us pray together. I know that you have been blessed. You have been blessed this morning. Let's pray together. Is there any promise God has made to you? Direct for you and your family, in your place of work, on your business, your health, your finances. I want to begin to claim those promises now. Begin to claim them. Say, Lord, you said so, I believe you. Lord, you said so, I believe your word. Lord, you spoke to me, I believe your word. Begin to claim the promises. Begin to dwell on it. Begin to ruminate on it. Begin to bring it out. Lord, you said this. Lord, you said it, and as you are saying it, he said, come, he said, remind me. Let's come together. Let's listen together. Begin to pray now. Begin to remind him of his promise. Whatever it is, I believe very strongly.
that today is the day that God has made for those promises to come to pass. Father, we give you praise. Father, we thank you. We love you. We appreciate you. And if you have a reason to doubt it at any time, repent of your doubt now. Say, Lord, I will never doubt you again. I will never doubt that promise that you have given to me. Some of you, are, it's so, it's, it was so real that it has been confirmed by, by two or three other men of God or of children of God to, to you. It has been confirmed. Why are you still doubting it? Lord, I have no reason to doubt you anymore and I will never doubt you again. Thank you, precious Father. I give you glory, Lord. I give you all the hope. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. That promise looks so big that it's, so, it's bigger than you can even, you can even imagine. Yes. Because God in prayer is big. Can you say, Lord, thank you? Because your promise to me is big. And I know because you are also big, you don't make small promise. Father, I thank you. I give you praise. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Eternal God, we thank you for the world we have had today. The absolute power of God's promise. And I believe strongly today, everyone who has had this world, your promise for them, this year, we come to pass in the name of Jesus. Nothing will stop it. Nothing will hold down on it. In the name of Jesus. Whatever has been standing on their way, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Thank you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. You can think over this message over and over. And if there's any question or any prayer of agreement you need, just call my number 66 or send out email. You see the information on the screen. You can always contact us and I will be of help to help you. Now, don't forget on Wednesday, we have Bible study, 8 p.m. Hallelujah. And then on Saturday, by the grace of God, we are meeting 8 p.m. As you join us on the end of this meeting, I believe strongly that the God of heaven will bless you and his promise for your life will not fail. Until I see you again, God bless you.